Greetings, friends, and happy Friday to you. My name is Derek Shepherd, and uh, it's a pleasure to be able to share our devotional with you today. I'm one of the pastors here at New Life Church. I don't know about you, but I have really been enjoying the, um, the uh, devotionals as we've been going through the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, one thing I really think I get a lot out of and I, is, is when the person who's sharing the Scripture shares about their testimony and how God met them in the place that they were and the Scripture that helped them. There's a lot of power when we do that, when we testify and we identify God's strength in our difficulty. Uh, the scripture that I want to talk about today is found in Isaiah. It's Isaiah 26, 3. It's like one of my favorite scriptures. I always go to the scripture and it says this, you will keep in perfect peace all those whose trust is in you, all those whose thoughts are fixed on you. You know, um, I want to ask you this question. What does per perfect peace look like to you? I mean, it is it laying on a sandy beach and the sun is shining, the little breeze, sailboats on the water? Is it a mountain scene? Is it a, uh, you know, uh, is it being at a carnival, throwing uh, beanbags at, uh, in a carnival game? What does perfect peace look like to you? Uh, I ran into this illustration that I want to share with you that I thought was really good, made a great uh, observation. Uh, and that is, uh, it, it, it says this, there was a story of a king who set up this contest uh, for artists to enter to uh, draw the best picture of what they considered perfect peace to be. Of course, there was uh, many different uh, entries, and he kind of narrowed it down to two that really stood out to him. The first artist drew a picture of uh, a, be uh, 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 a lake scene, perfectly still water, mountains, pine trees, a uh, uh, perfect blue sky, gentle breeze. Uh, uh, this was his picture, just a beautiful picture of what he considered perfect peace to be. The second picture was, uh, it had mountains in it as well. Uh, the mountains were jagged uh, and they weren't snow capped. And uh, the, instead of being a, a lake that was uh, like a, a piece of glass, it was uh, water that was torrential coming down the side of the mountain, like a white water uh, uh, rapid. Um, the sky was dark and there was a lightning and inclement weather. And the king goes on to, well, actually, there was one thing about that particular painting that made it stand out to the king and uh, caused him to choose it as his absolute favorite. And that was under the waterfall, under the torrential rain and water was a little bird nest that was uh, caught, that was that the, a mother bird had built right there. And she was sitting there uh, perfectly calm. And he said, you know what, this is perfect peace because perfect peace doesn't have to do with the things that are all around, the things that um, are just the inclement weather, the difficulties that we find ourselves in. Um, so the second observation I want to take a look at um, in this particular scripture is um, all those who trust in you. And I want to take a look at a scripture, and that's uh, Jeremiah 17, 7. Through eight, and it says this: "Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots to the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and it's uh, it it never fails to bear fruit." In this particular scripture, just talking about. No matter what kind of situation we're in, when our trust and our confidence is in God, when we are standing on um, what his promises are, we're standing on who he is, that confidence causes us to be able to bear fruit, whether it's inclement or not, whether there's a drought, where, no matter what kind of season we might be going through, our leaves will be green and we'll continue to bear fruit. The third observation I want to take a look at is all those whose thoughts are fixed on you. All, you know, and another translation said, all those whose imaginations are consumed with you. You know, there's a scenario, uh, a situation in my life uh, about five years ago, uh, my mother uh, uh, passed and there was uh, a season before where her, her health was beginning to decline and um, uh, she, you know, she was in a rehab uh, facility nearby, and it gave me the opportunity to go by and visit her 
quite often. And so I had a schedule set up and I had to set the schedule up to I'd go by uh, and visit her on a Monday because uh, I would feel depressed um, and I would feel overwhelmed uh, for at least three days after then, at least until Thursday, uh, till Wednesday or Thursday, I would just feel like a mess. And so this trend went on um, for quite a while that I would go see my mom, visit her, see decline and feel heavy in my heart and uh, then leave and then come back and do it again the next week. Um, and there, there came a situation where my sister, who was the main caregiver to my, to my mother, uh, needed to go out of town and she was going to be gone for a couple of weeks. So I knew the responsibility, the weight of the responsibility of, of visiting and taking care of my mom was going to fall on me. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, I, I need to be, and if I remember correctly, it was right around Christmas and I didn't want to be emotionally um, uh, void from my wife and my family, uh, just walking around like a zombie, feeling depressed and low. And I really prayed and thought God to, to help me find peace in being able to love and take care of my mom during this time while she was going through the season. And God showed me something in that moment, in that, at that time, that really unlocked something for me. And it gave me um, something that actually um, I, I've shared with many people before. And that is he um, communicated to me to focus and to find Jesus in the room. And what I mean by that and what it meant in that particular situation is God allowed me to see that the, the, the nurse that had been assigned to my mom was a, a Christian and she was loving and she was sweet. And in that moment, God allowed me to see that uh, my mom was fully coherent and we were able to laugh and to share some really sweet moments. And in that moment of, uh, of that my mom's health was declining, he allowed me to see that uh, that there was uh, very little discomfort and she needed very few pain medications. Um, and even as I knew the end was drawing nigh, God allowed me to see Jesus in the room, how he was taking care of my mother. And, and, I, and it, that's such a contrast of what I was feeling before, what I was uh, experiencing before coming to visit and feeling low and depressed being there. Um, and, and God showed me that when I was able to keep my mind on him, keep my thoughts on him, keep my imagination focused and fixed on him, he allowed me to see him in a larger and greater way in this situation. The circumstances did not change. The situation did not change, but I was able to see clearly God in the room. So I'm gonna pray for you today. Even as uh, I don't know what your circumstances are, I don't know what you're dealing with, and I want to let you know that, first of all, your church is here. If you ever need a prayer, if you ever need just somebody to speak to you, let us know. We're here and we're available. We are still working. We're still doing ministry. We're still praying. We're still worshiping. We're still believing for God's best in this season for you. Bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you, to lift up who you are, to find you in the midst to let you be the focus, the focal point of our thoughts and our imagination. I pray for each one listening today. Bless them. Allow them to see your hand in the very season that they're in. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful day.